managing and updating apps is pretty difficult, at least it is for me using Intune. Speaking to other Mac admins, they're like, just use Monkey or use Mac Updater. And when you look at those, integrating them into Intune is it's pretty complicated. For Monkey, for example, you need to either have some local server or a web server or some sort of cloud accessible storage. And I guess it does work. And for admins who manage their own organization and have a lot of Macs, then fine, it's probably worth the effort to build and maintain that. But for me, I only manage a few apps, a few Macs in a few organizations. And I don't have the time to mess around building my own Mac app update solution. And the thing is, we already have solutions like Patchify PC and Robopack in the Windows world. So I've been looking for a version that supports Mac. And I think I've found it. Let's look at App Catalog by Route 3. If we head to their website, which is appcatalog.cloud, you get a list of applications. It's a very, very, very long list of applications that are supported by this. It says 1,276. I haven't counted them. You can if you like. You can sign up for a trial. It's very easy to do that, and the documentation is pretty slick on how you get started. But I thought I'd give it a go and get started now so that we can see how it works. So, the place you should start is probably the documentation, really. So there it is. Have a read through that and understand it. It fully integrates with Intune so that we can use it pretty easily. There's a few quirks, but pretty easily. And uh, I, th I, th I think it works all right. So let's, let's see. So the first thing we need to do, probably, and it doesn't mention this in the documentation specifically, is to deploy the app catalog application. And so we're going to do that. We're going to uh, deploy the app catalog app. And let's go to the documentation to find that. And it says installing app catalog. You can use these commands here, or you can download the PKG installer. Let's do the PKG installer version. I'm not sure if that's the right way to do it, but let's see if it works. It's in my downloads folder. I'm going to go to uh, apps, all apps, no, Mac OS, add. I'm going to add in this PKG app, select that, add in this PKG file, and choose OK, and then call it app catalog, Mac OS app catalog, by root 3. And choose next, no pre and post install scripts, and 14 or above. Got the right bundle ID in there. Let's assign it to a good test group. This one here. Choose next, and make sure it's going to the right place. It is. So create. Okay, that's going to now just install on my Mac. I'm just going to log into it to so make sure it's all ready when we need it. Okay, so that's uploaded and now it's heading off to my Mac. Perfect. The next thing we need to do is to download the config. Now, you can create your own config profile if you like for uh, App Catalog, but I don't really want to create my own. I want to modify the, the one they provide slightly. So if we go to App Catalog and choose Config Profile, you get two versions. You get a basic one, which will just do everything for you and get pretty much everything set up in quite a simple way or you can do the custom now i like the basic one because i don't need to create everything from scratch but the basic one does allow the user to see all available apps and install all available apps which is not something i want them to be able to do so i'm going to download this one and it's in my downloads folder i'm going to open a visual studio code and make a slight change so this is the file here. You get the authorization key already built in and you get the organization name, which I'm going to have to blank out because it's a customer. So you get all that built in. The only change I'm going to make is I'm going to add in some categories. So I want to add in these categories and also these enabled apps. So categories allow you to find applications better within the app catalog, but also enabled apps mean that you can prevent users from seeing all apps and only show them the specific ones that you want them to see. So let's do that. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to find uh, just, let's put it just above update interval here. I'm just going to put it right there. And that's the, I've just copied all that stuff that I just copied and pasted it there. So I'm going to save that. And that's what I'm going to upload now into Intune. 
So we're going to go to devices, Mac, configuration, create a new policy, and the policy is going to be custom. I'm going to call it app catalog configuration. Just put that mobile config file in there. Perfect. I'm going to add my group of test devices. And that's that. Great. We'll choose next and create. Okay, so that's the app catalog being pushed, the app catalog configuration being pushed to my devices. Next, we do need to consider something else. We have to have these three, three, three things here. So granting user notifications, manage login items, and the app management. Those are the three things that make it kind of work without the user having to click approve or do things. So we want to grab some, some of these things. So firstly, we will grab the uh, example notifications one here. I'm also going to do the same for the login items and also app management PPPC to give full disk access. So I want to deploy those three and I'm going to do it exactly the same way. I won't bore you with the actual process of doing it. I'll quickly go through that and we'll come back when I've done, when I've done it. Okay, so I've just added all of these and actually you can find more information about how to do that in the integration for Intune section right here. It tells you to, well, it tells you to create the config profile that I just did and then also how to uh, deploy all of these configuration profiles so that's perfect next let's deploy an, up, an app for Chrome for example and the reason I'm saying Chrome is that it's already here and I can just download this file and deploy it very very simple this is this is the section this is the information here that you need to have in the script you need a bundle identifier which you get from the app catalog by going to app catalog and then typing Chrome and you'll see if I open up Chrome the bundle ID is right there and if we go back to the documentation this is where you would put the bundle ID I'll download this one and open it up in VS code and there is it there it is exactly as we just saw it so all we need to do is push this script via Intune and we should be good so let's do that back to Intune. I'm going to go for Mac OS devices, scripts, add, and let's do app catalog install Google Chrome. Choose next. Select that file, install Google Chrome, and there it is. Perfect. We want to scroll down and make sure we're not running as a signed in user and we don't need to run it every week and we can run it up to three times. So that's that. So I want to choose next. I'm going to choose add groups. I'm going to go for my test group of devices here. Select next. Now before I choose add, because when I choose add, it will start pushing stuff to this device and I don't want it to start pushing it to the device until it's ready to work. So let's head to the device and now and see what we've got installed. I don't have the app catalog yet because it would be here somewhere. So give this a few more seconds. Actually, I'm going to go to company portal and sign in. Just see if I can push this down a bit faster. Choose check status. Okay, so we've got this one here, manage login items added. And I've got a feeling that is actually to do with the app catalog. I, the Zoom one isn't related to that. But let's take a look in settings and see if that one there is related to the app catalog. So it's in privacy and security. Down to the bottom in profiles. And we have the app management app catalog here. We've got the app, app, app catalog configuration, manage login items configuration from app catalog. So aside from the actual app being installed, um, ah, there it is. Okay, 
open this up and let's see what we get. Perfect. Those are the apps that I added in. So by default, you would have all of all the apps, all 1,276 apps. I didn't like that. So let's see if we can add some more apps to this list later on. But for now, it'd be possible for a user to click install on Google Chrome. I don't want them to do that. Um, okay, great. So I'm ready to push this script. Choose add. And what I would like to see is that Google Chrome gets installed. If I go to here and just double check that Chrome isn't already installed, I'm almost certain it isn't. Yeah, it's not installed. So what we need to wait for now is for this script to get pushed down to this device and that'll be perfect. Okay, so as you can see on the right hand side there, we've got it saying Google Chrome 12664781813 is installed and then it's, it's added a background item. And that was done without me doing anything at all, just waiting a, a few minutes. The time on the right hand side there shows you how long I waited. So that was relatively easy. Let's do another one. I should, probably should have been doing another one while I was waiting, but I didn't. Um, let's do another one and let's try, actually let's try deploying VS Code. I'll show you how to do that. So we'll go back to the catalog. And from here, I'm going to search for VS Code. There it is. And actually you can see the bundle identifier right there. So just copy that. And I'm going to go and let's modify the Chrome one actually. So VS Code, just want to change this. So I'm going to save it as a different name. So I'm going to call it install VS Code. Save that. And that's all we need to do. Very, very simple. I'm sure you could automate that if you wanted to. So let's go back to Intune. I'm going to add a script called app catalog install VS Code. Choose next. Select this file, which is this one here. Scroll down and make sure it's not running as the standard user. And we'll allow it to run up three times. Choose next. I'm going to add my group of test devices. Choose next and add. Okay, fantastic. So that says it's created and it's assigned it. All good. So we head back to the machine. I'm going to remove these here so that when they pop up, we, we can see them. I'm going to choose check status and see if it can install some more applications. Now, in the meantime, you can see that we've got Google Chrome set as installed here. I'm going to refresh this. Refresh here. And it's now set to open because it's detected that it's been installed. But while we wait for that application to install, I want to show you something fun. So fun is relative, obviously. Go to update. You can see that it's found other applications in this organization that need to be updated. And by default, apps will be updated every day without you needing to do anything about that. So FileZilla, for example, is on this machine. Snagit, Logi Options Plus, all of these will be automatically updated day by day as updates are available. That's because in the app catalog configuration profile, I've left auto update enabled. You could disable that if you wanted to, or you could even specifically exclude individual apps if you wanted to make sure that application doesn't update but other applications do so it's quite flexible with, with with that regard it also shows you all of the apps that are installed and i think it's just a fantastic layout and a fantastic solution that i've been desperately looking for for the past few months and it seems to work really really well so let's wait for that application to install in the meantime we'll head back to the app catalog I want to show you the dashboard. This theoretically should show me all the computers and applications that I've deployed via this solution. And funnily enough, there it is. There's Google Chrome. One application has been installed. And uh, yeah, I'm. Oh, a log. Huh. It even shows me the a, a log of what happened on that device. Uh, Fantastic. It took 56 seconds. That's what it did. It notified the user. 
that's incredibly useful, I think, because you'll see any errors that you, you have when you push it out to your test devices, for example. Also, updates. I'm going to leave this a little while. I'm not going to install any updates manually. I want to see what happens and see if these actually do update as it promises by themselves. So I'll leave this for a little while. Uh, in the meantime, let's go back to my machine. It hasn't pushed that new app yet. So I'm going to go back to the still seems to be updating the status we'll give that another click okay give that a few seconds to install see what happens and within a couple of minutes it installed visual studio code and i assume if i go to all apps here it hasn't added it because i haven't allowed it to be added to this um, interface you would have to specifically go into the config and update that but if i show installed apps it should show visual studio code here there it is and so I could install it from there and that will be updated as and when updates are made available. Checking the dashboard and see if that's updated in the dashboard, see how quick that is to update. So one computer, two installs, VS Code, let's see what it says in the log, VS Code here, the version that was installed and yeah, incredible. So. I like it. I like it a lot. I'm going to test it a bit more and see how it works with updating because that was actually the use case was updating applications, but they will update themselves according to the documentation. So I don't need to actually do anything about that. They will just update the applications that are there. So I need to see that happen before I'm convinced that it works, but I will definitely come back to you when it does work so that we can see how good this thing is. In the meantime, um, Let's look at the price. I didn't show you the price. So let's go to Route 3 App Catalog. Let's take a look. So pricing, clear and trans transparent pricing, which is awesome. So it is uh, two euros, two cents per Mac per month, or 2,400 euros per year because it invoices on the annual amount of that scale. So you're paying for 99, even if you don't, if you only have 10 and you're paying in a year, but two and a half thousand euros for keeping your Mac update, Mac apps updated automatically and having that ability to deploy Mac apps seamlessly with just one tiny line change in a script that you push is, I, yeah, I don't know. For me, that would be worth it. Um, obviously the more Macs you have, the more it will cost, but the better the economies of scale I really like it. Um, I'm going to play with it a bit more. I've got 14 days left in the trial, so this is going to be fun. See you next time.